welcome in. So let's try to figure out how this blood pressure device actually works. Now the blood pressure device is a funny name. So sphagmo manometer or sphagmo manometer. You can try to say that pretty quick a few times. Now, before I get into the video, I would want you to know what this sphagmo is referring to. So sphagmo without the manometer, okay, is referring to anything relating to the pulse. So that kind of makes sense, right? So we have our heart and it's pulsating. Manometer was actually the original device which was used to measure blood pressure. And you're gonna learn how it actually works in this video. So on my kind of pointing, okay, as you can see there on the screen, basically I'm taking blood pressure. So that blood pressure is actually my blood pressure. So it's going to be the reading which you're going to see and that particular reading gives us the blood pressure. There are two types of blood pressure that we typically measure. So there is a systolic blood pressure and there's a diastolic blood pressure. The systolic one is really the maximum pressure that is present. And that maximum pressure occurs when the heart actually pumps out, okay, extracts the blood. So it's the full out force that is happening. And that is typically known as the systolic. It's the highest blood pressure. And then your diastolic is the lower blood pressure. So it is the range okay, of blood pressures that you have and we're interested in the highest one, systolic, and the lowest one, which is diastolic. So those are the two. Now, notice that it says the actual reading, right? 113 and 76 okay, is the lowest. That's mine. I don't know what yours might be. So this one I'm very happy with. It also shows me, okay, at least on this, I have a 58 okay, heart rate, and this is in the middle of the day, which is actually pretty good. So you have these readings. Our interest is just that blood pressure reading that you have. And then how exactly do these machines calculate? Now, you will notice that one important aspect okay, of the actual readings is that the unit is in millimeters of mercury. So you will notice that it is an mm. Hg millimeter should make sense to you, okay? And mercury, hopefully, if you've done a little bit of chemistry, should also make sense to you. Now, I'm going to explain the millimeters and the mercury where that comes from historically, and it does come from the manometer that was once used as a device, it's no longer used, and we don't typically use mercury anymore in the devices because it's poisonous, especially if they break down or they leak. So now we have other ways. Uh, let's go back so that you can really figure out and know how this blood pressure reading works. So first of all, what is interesting is to really understand that reading, you have to know a few things and they are related towards physics in some way. So number one, you have to be familiar with what density is. So density, I'll put up a link up above, is nothing else but simply the mass, which is divided by the volume. And I'll go into details in that video if you want to take a link. You also have to know, obviously, what is exactly pressure? How is this pressure calculated and how is it defined? Well, pressure in general is known as the normal force, which is present on a surface area that you have. And that is the equation. So it's force over the area. And I'll put up a link up above there if you're interested in that. Now, what else is important in understanding really that blood pressure reading? So one very important concept, once you grasp density and once you grasp pressure, is pressure in fluids. Now, this is actually pressure in static fluids in particular, so fluids that are not moving. And that, we want to be able to know what that pressure is okay, in a fluid at a depth. So here, deja vu. This is the pressure and how you calculate it is. Notice this is where the density comes up and that's why it's important. For us, it's gonna be the density of mercury. Okay, this G is the force K okay, related to the gravity and it's actually the acceleration due to gravity. So that's gonna be 9.8 meters per second squared. And H 
is the actual depth in the fluid that you want to find the pressure at. So this is my H, so that is the height from here to the top of the actual fluid. So imagine there's a fluid in here and you want to be able to find what this height is and you want to find what the pressure at that depth. Again, I'll put up a link up above there okay, for you with regards to that. And finally, number four, you should be familiar with the terminology of absolute pressure. So what is that absolute pressure, which is nothing else but the atmospheric pressure that you have plus the gauge pressure that you have. And by the way, what you are going to be reading and in here, so what is displayed on this right there, these pressures are the gauge pressures that are actual manometers are reading or the sphagmomanometer okay that's what they're reading they are reading this right there but you should be familiar with these if you want to know and understand the derivation of where this actually comes from and i'll put up a link up above there okay where i talk about the atmos atmospheric absolute and then the gauge pressure and the distinguishing feature between them so there you go that's the start now, if you're familiar with density, pressure, okay, with pressure at a depth, and then you have some concept and understanding of absolute atmospheric and gauge pressure, now we can dive in to actually figure out how this actual pressure is derived going back to the original manometer device. So the manometer was a device where you had a tube like this, and in this tube, you had a liquid. And that particular liquid, it turned out to be mercury. So mercury and not water. Now, there is a reason for that because mercury is a lot denser than water. So it wouldn't rise up or down depending on the pressure as much. So notice that water, okay, the density is 1 times 10 to the 3. So 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. But mercury, as you see here, is 13.6, so about 14 times more dense than water. And that was one of the reasons why mercury was actually used. So now we're going to be concentrating on mercury. So assume that mercury is filled up within here. And one of the key things is if we disconnect, okay, so notice this is your cuff, okay, that you're going to be using that this device is pumping the air into. So how does this actually work? Let's remove the cuff entirely. So what would happen in here? So what's going to happen if you were removing the cuff, if this was not connected at all? So if all you had was basically this. So let me copy this. So let's imagine we have this. Now this is the manometer device. And inside, so as I said, we have mercury. Now, if you do have mercury and you do have this open okay, to the atmosphere, so the pressure from the atmosphere you would have in there, and also since it is disconnected from the device, then you would have the pressure over here, which would also disconnect. So the mercury inside would balance, and it would balance off, it would just settle, so that you have, because you have the pressure on the left and on the right, this two would be equal. So they would be at exactly the same height. And as you can see there, therefore the pressure on the left and the pressure on the right would be equal. Now, when you want to be able to calculate what the pressure is, okay, so what your blood pressure is, then you would go back in here. And as you actually put this on, so you would have this cuff. This particular cuff is filled up now with more and more air. Right, so it's getting more and more condensed in there. And what it's doing is, okay, so on your arm, so if it was attached to your arm, it would slowly block off the flow, right? Now, it's only going to block off the flow of your actual blood. Well, now it's momentarily, of course. It's gonna block it off only if the pressure in the cuff is equal to the pressure that you have, okay, running through your actual, so in this case, as you're going through, okay, your veins and your arteries. Now, because it's at the same height as your heart, okay, that is the pressure you wanna read. So you want to block that off. 
And what happens in the device, it will actually increase the pressure to block it. And then it slowly will release the pressure to the point where it senses that your blood starts to flow again. And that change is the actual pressure reading that you have. So your systolic pressure that you have in there is read in that particular way. So let's try to understand how this actually happens and how is it used within here. Now, because you're blowing up, okay, and then the air and condensing it, then you are also, so not only in the cuff, but through this, okay, so that air is basically traveling in here. Now it's blocking off this entirely. So it's pushing the pressure in this way and you keep on increasing it, okay? So it gets higher and higher. And what happens is that, so if I go back in here, if all of a sudden you now close this in and you start pumping this in, then this no longer is the atmospheric pressure, but it is the pressure which you're trying to sense, okay, within your blood. So that's the blood pressure. So it is going to be the same, okay, at that particular blockage part where your blood is no longer flowing and you wanna find that maximum pressure that you have. And that particular pressure, so as you're going in there, so within here, so it's going to travel all the way down. And what is it going to do? It's going to push down on the mercury. Now, because all of a sudden what happens is that this pressure is exceeding the pressure on the left. So what do fluids do? The fluids want to balance. And what's going to happen is that your actual mercury here, it's going to start to rise. And this is going to start to fall, of course, because you have the same amount of mercury. And now all of a sudden, what will happen is that you will have now a difference between the height. So you're gonna create a height right here, okay? So from here to here, that's going to be the height that you have that the mercury has risen. And again, so on this plane, because fluids at the same depth have the same pressure, which means that the pressure over here, P1, and the pressure over here, P2, have to be equal. Now, pressure P2 is coming from, so what you have in there is that is the pressure that you have. This is from your blood. That's the pressure, which is equivalent, right, that you're pumping in into your cuff. So I'm gonna call that P, kind of the, the blood pressure that you have within there. Now, that particular pressure is the total pressure that you have, okay, overall. Now, we're gonna be interested in, in the gauge pressure. So let's see how we would find this. So now, on the left-hand side, so this pressure, P1, it is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So this is gonna be P atmospheric, which is pushing Okay, they're down plus the pressure coming from the actual liquid. Now, in this case, the liquid is the mercury. So that's the pressure that you have, right, at a certain depth. And this is nothing else, okay, as this particular formula that we have. And that pressure where we have our density of the mercury, the G and the H, is what we want to be able to measure. So that is the density of the mercury. The G is the gravity, which is 9.8. And then this H, okay, this is the height of how much the mercury has risen. And this is exactly the reading. So in here, if it reads 113 millimeters of mercury, that is exactly how much it has risen the mercury has risen 113 millimeters, which is not far, it's 11.3, I guess, centimeters, okay, if you're gonna go that way. So it's not very far, but that's because the mercury is so dense. And then the other reading, if you're reading the diastolic, the 76 millimeters of mercury, that would just mean that the lowest pressure that you have within your blood, then obviously this component wouldn't be as high right this okay would start to drop down to 76 millimeters and it's that height that is actually the measure of that pressure this is historically done now you might wonder and say how does this relate back to your regular pressure in maybe pascals 
okay, or pounds per square inch, right, um, on, and so on. Now, you can relate all of those back for yourself because the atmospheric pressure, right, so ATM units, the Pascal's pressures, uh, the PSI pressure, and millimeters of mercury are all related. So you can go back and forth between them. And here is the conversion. So there you have it. That's the conversion that you have. Those are the units that are related. So if you wanted to be able to glance back right here and maybe convert to Pascal's, you can use that ratio between that and the other. If you want to convert it to any other unit, you certainly can. So that is what happens. Now, when you are reading this out, then as you notice on the left and the right, okay, so as you're going through, so the actual overall pressure, so this, okay, which is the absolute pressure entirely, that's the atmospheric plus the gauge, okay, so if you wanted to read off, okay, this value right there, you would be solving okay, for this only, because we do not add the atmospheric pressure to this. This is just the gauge pressure that we have. And that gauge pressure, really, all we need to know is because we know that it's mercury we're dealing with, so we know what the density is, then we can find out the rest. So that is the explanation that you have, okay, within here. And I hope that you find this useful. So now, you can really think of where this actual blood pressure readings have come from. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.